Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous moonlit firefly studded night there in the collapse of global industrial civilization where it is Wednesday night, July 6, 2022 and uh, just need to, before I get into my rant, just need to bid a fond farewell to the Georgia Guidestones. The Georgia Guidestones, which were blown up some by some clueless moron last night and uh, finished off by these, somebody else this morning. So anyway, you can find uh, commentary on that elsewhere in the Doomosphere. But since it is Wednesday, here for what's kind of my bi-weekly Roundup. I think I'm going to make my oilprice.com uh, roundup maybe every other Wednesday. Good Lord. And there's like 10 stories here I wanted to share with you guys on oilprice.com. So I can't get deep into any of them. I highly advise. I, I know it sounds crazy for a doomer to be uh, keeping tabs on a, on a website for fossil fuel investors, but I'm telling you that next to mongabay.com, oilprice.com really is, uh, it's, it's a treasure trove because you get to, you know what I'm saying, you, you get a peek into what, you know, the people making money off of fossil fuels or talking about the situation on the planet and uh, I agree with them. I actually agree with oilprice.com more than I agree with mongabay.com. This is how weird it's gotten. Uh, how weird it's gotten. So. These are going to be in no particular order. I probably should have spent more time organizing them. And uh, as I say, I highly suggest you go on oilprice.com and, and, and read all these stories yourself and 500 more. These are just a few. Mining, mining industry, not Manga Bay, the mining industry itself warns energy transition is not sustainable. Yes, the takeaway, there is a glaring problem in the energy transition that not many people are acknowledging. Like, you know, the, the little uh, greeny lefties are not acknowledging. It is being built on the back of finite resources and the mining industry itself is already warning that there are not enough metals for all the batteries the transition will require. Because of the short supply, prices are on the rise as are prices across commodity sectors. Okay, we're going to read uh, the first couple of paragraphs, as I say, I get, there's a lot of stuff I want to get to. <clears throat> the energy transition has been set by politicians as the only way forward for human civilization. Not every country on the planet, not every country and, and a lot of doomers is on board with it. But those that are have the loudest voices. And even amid the fossil fuel crunch that is beginning to cripple economies, the transition remains a goal. It is no secret that the transition at the scale its architects and most fervent proponents envision it can you say the AOC gang, I call these um, clueless morons the AOC gang, would require massive amounts of metals and minerals. 
What does not get talked about so much is that most of these metals and minerals are already in short supply and this is only the start of the transition problems. Mining industry executives have been warning that there is not enough copper, lithium, cobalt, or nickel for all the EV batteries that the transition will require and they have not been the only ones either. Even so, the European Union just this month went ahead and effectively banned the sales of cars with internal combustion engines starting in the year 2035. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is one of these uh, one of these planet eaters. Uh, a senior VP at MP Minerals, a rare earth miner, quote, rare earth materials are fundamental building blocks and their applications are very wide across modern life. He added that, quote, one third of the demand in 2035 is not projected to be satisfied based on investments that are happening now and uh, right now it means you know prices going through the roof and of course a lot of the battery metals that the energy transition requires are sourced from Africa a continent fraught with poverty corruption and political uncertainty it is also a continent that is currently threatened by a new sort of colonialism because of the energy transition. And of course, who we're talking about here is China. Uh, based on this evidence, it appears that besides being non-renewable, the energy transition appears to not be very socially conscious either. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, in other words, yes, the you know, the green, the lefty greeny movement which focuses on transition companies might in fact be a movement that rewards companies that are neither very environmentally nor socially friendly, at least not in Africa. Yes, anyway guys, it goes on from there. But uh, you draw your own dots between that story and this one. We're going to go from the green transition back to Shell Oil Company. Shell warns spare oil capacity is running very low. Yes, uh, this is Shell Z CEO Van Borden. Uh, according to him, it will be impossible to cover the entire pipeline gas capacity out of Russia with liquid national gas. Uh, all right. Global spare capacity is running very low, which will keep oil and gas markets on edge for some time, according to the CEO of Super Major Shell. Uh, while global spare energy capacity continues to deplete, demand for oil and gas is recovering despite the current economic and pandemic challenges. Uh, there you go. Uh, anyway, and then of course we have uh, the same story with global refining.
capacity so all you peak oilers have something to uh, to brag about here is an editorial from whoever the editor of this place is a more realistic approach to the energy transition uh, much of the rhetoric following the Paris Agreement and more recently the COP26 climate summit has been centered around how the world must transition entirely away from fossil fuels to renewable alternatives. I cannot see this camera whether I am uh, talking to myself or not. Is this camera still on? I got a black camera and uh, the little red recording light doesn't work. But in the face of global energy shortages, it has become apparent just how much the world continues to rely on oil and gas to meet its energy needs. Yes. So according to the, you know, not surprisingly, according to the editor of oilprice.com, as companies and governments increase their investments in renewable energy operations, it is not a choice of either or, but rather of balancing the two, boosting green developments while reducing emissions and fossil fuel projects to ensure energy security while also building a resilient renewable energy industry. So this guy's pretty much talking out of both sides of his mouth, uh, you know, looking at, you know, basically what he's saying here, the, the, the thing that I mentioned in my rant last week, I think, you know, the, the, the one takeaway that everybody can agree on with uh, the, uh, that little kerfuffle going on over there in Ukraine, uh, whatever else you can say about it, is there anybody else who, is there anybody who can deny the fact, this is not an opinion, the fact what, what this has proven beyond all shadow of a doubt, when the choice becomes the price of a gallon of gas or the collapse of a planet, the extinction of the human race and every one of our other earthlings, people are going to be more concerned about the price of a gallon of gas than they are about this planet and make me guilty as charged, okay? I spend a hell of a lot more time, uh, you know, day to day worrying about the price of a gallon of gas than I do about the collapse of a planet, all right? I'm being honest here, guys, and so do you. You know goddamn well you do. You, you, anyone listening to this is more concerned about the price of a gallon of gas than, than you are about this planet. You, me, Sancho Panza, you know, all of this crap talking about how concerned you are about this planet. Uh, anyway, I wanted to... Uh, Okay, this is the paragraph I wanted to read uh, from this article. <clears throat> they're, they're looking at this, this new report. Uh, it, it, I mean, you can go on here and read the article at oilprice.com. The report shows that despite optimism around an energy transition, coal, oil, and gas still dominate the world's energy consumption. Executive director, blah, 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 anyway, whoever this guy is, quote, the share of renewable energy has moved in the last decade, okay, from 10.6% to what? In the last 10 years, the share 
okay, are you following the share of the total energy uh, pie has gone from 10.6 to 11.7%. All right, while fossil fuels, uh, including all coal and gas, have moved from 80.1% of the mix to 79.6%. Yes, so it is stagnating. And since the total energy demand is rising, this actually means that we are consuming more fossil fuels than ever. I have been, uh, me and, and uh, anyone else with, with a brain, trying to explain this. When the entire energy demand pie is getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year, even if the share of fossil fuels is falling a tiny bit, if the whole pie is bigger, the fossil fuel slice of the pie is bigger than it's ever been when compared to a smaller pie. This is a real brain teaser, okay? I mean, even a clueless moron like me can understand this. This suggests that despite big promises, many countries are continuing to stick to what they know best and not boosting renewable energy production enough alongside ongoing fossil fuel projects. Do you think so? Uh, of course, a lot of buzz about oil dropping below a hundred a couple of days ago. Uh, so why did oil prices crash uh, 7% yesterday? Uh, crude oil prices fell by nearly 7% on Tuesday as fears of a recession mount, a scenario that could put a dent in the oil demand. Uh, there you go. Uh, then they break all this down. Uh, but the bottom line in the mainstream media is playing this up a lot uh, is that, that people are freaking out that we correctly, they're freaking out that we are in a recession. And I am not a, an economist. I am an Airbnb host. And uh, I, I will say we are in a recession. Good Lord, is this battery, this, this camera, this black camera is, is a, uh, all right, uh, three more, uh, well, I'm not going to get too deep into this one. You can, uh, you can decide for yourself what this means. This is oilprice.com spin on this one. Sweden and Finland move one step closer to joining NATO. Yes. Uh, okay. This is a good day for Finland and Sweden and a good day for NATO. I'm not so sure it's a good day for the planet, but uh, this really, uh, you can decide why that story is in oilprice.com. I am not going to open up that can of worms. Uh, whether it is a good day for the planet that Sweden and Finland 
move one step closer to joining NATO. All right, a quick peek over there in Germany. They got two more here, guys. Let's go over to Germany for this one. German Union had entire industries could fall because of gas bottlenecks. All right, we have a glimmer of good news. Uh, entire industries could fall. Germany's trade union had sounded the alarm bells on Monday. Yes. <clears throat> Telling media that Russian natural gas supply cuts could lead to widespread industrial collapse. This is uh, Yasmin Fahimi, quote, entire industries are in danger of collapsing permanently because of the gas bottlenecks. Aluminum, glass, the chemical industry. Such a collapse would have massive consequences for the entire economy and jobs in Germany. Close quote. The dire warning comes ahead of another planned cut in Russian gas supplies later this month. Yes. The fear has prompted Germany's top officials to plead with consumers to cut down on usage. Yep, yep, yep. But we're going to wind up in Armenia. Uh, this one just kind of in the flotsam and jetsam department caught my eye. Environmentalists speak out as Armenia restarts controversial gold mine. After years of indecision, Armenia appears to be preparing the way to resume the development of the controversial Amalsar gold mine project. Yes. Uh, development of the mine was suspended in 2018 following large protests against the project's potential environmental damage. Since then, its prospects have fallen and risen as the government appeared unable to reconcile the need for investments and jobs in the country with the serious environmental consequences that the mind threatened and the resulting popular opposition to the project. The government has not said formally whether it intends to restart the mine project but activists monitoring it say that all signs point in that direction. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I could go on and on, and I highly encourage. I, I know this sounds crazy. I don't actually expect any doomers to uh, go on oilprice.com to try to figure out uh, what is going on on this planet. Uh, but it gives you a, you know, a little bit of a balance to the doomers. And uh, good for oilprice.com. But anyway, guys, I am exhausted and uh, I hear Netflix that Netflix has come out with the, they have outdone themselves, uh, and, and they're proud of this. They have, they have just put out the single sleaziest, most sensationalist 
uh, piece of garbage in Netflix history called The Girl in the Mirror. And uh, just, just it, where Netflix has uh, broken all the bounds. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I cannot resist going to watch The Girl in the Mirror to uh, get a little taste of human nature. I highly suggest you get out there and watch Netflix while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog. Did you survive that? What's that? Did you survive that? Okay, let's head out to the trailer and watch Netflix.